Grace and peace from our Lord Jesus Christ be multiplied unto you, our viewers out there. Welcome to your favorite program in His presence, a program that talks about the words of God and how we can apply the word of God into our lives so we can become a transformed, changed person from the old ways of life into the newness of life in Christ Jesus. And until we come in the unity of faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall all rejoice and be glad in it. And it's of the mercies of the Lord that the Lord has kept on myself to witness another brand new day we need to give all the praises all the honor all the adoration back unto him because he deserves our praise the bible according to psalm 16 verse 11 says thou will show me the path of life in thy presence is fullness of joy and that is right and their pleasures forevermore i'm your host for today i'm akikunle akiola and the topic i have before you on this glorious day is restitution evidence of salvation and we'll be doing the second part today restitution evidence of salvation join us to discuss on our topic on this is apostle praise johnson of dynamic faith christian center in johannesburg south africa is here to discuss with us on this day so it is another great privilege you gave for us to have his come and discuss with us on this day thank you very much it's a privilege for me to come again always a privilege to come and share the word of god and interact with the spirit of god in the studio amen so our topic today is restitution evidence of salvation and our emphasis today is going to be on what restitution is what restitution is all about how do we carry out restitution and what are the things that we can actually restitute and which are the things in which we just have to speak to god and we just believe on the grace of god now before we actually go into what restitution is let's lay a foundation to our topic of discussion today starting with salvation what is salvation yeah, uh, salvation is, is a supernatural experience with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. that translates you from the old man, which is the Adamic nature, into a new man, which is a man in Christ. And that is why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that if anyone be in Christ, he's a new creation, all things have passed away and all things are now new. So that supernatural experience, that experience with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. that translates you from the old man to the new man, from the old nature to the new nature, is what is called salvation. Salvation is, is actually from the Greek word soteria. And it's a compound word that connotes a lot of things. Actually, it encompasses everything that Jesus came to die for. For instance, soteria means deliverance. Deliverance from sin, deliverance from poverty, deliverance from sickness, deliverance from the enemy. So salvation means, you know, deliverance from sin. It means del deliverance from the force of that. It means victory. It means prosperity. It, it, it means a whole lot of things. It means redemption. Everything that Jesus Christ came to deliver mankind from and everything Jesus Christ came to give mankind in exchange of sinful nature is what is called salvation. And so when you are saved, you are a new creation, but you are not just a new creation, you are a new creation with a new kind of life. If you are living in poverty before, when you get saved, there is a mandate over your life to begin to prosper. If you are living under satanic dehumanization before, when you get born again, you have access to victory. If you are living in sin before, when you get born again and you are saved, the power of sin, you know, naturally leaves you. The things you did before, your conscience was dead. You know, you could do so many things and you didn't even bother. Now that you are saved, you realize that when you do them, something tells you you are wrong. In other words, you are no longer a slave to that sin. You are now free. So when you now sin, it's like something strange is happening to your spirit. And that's what salvation is all about. It's an encounter with Christ that transforms you, you know, from inside out. Mm. Amen in Jesus' mighty name. So let's now look at mm. the aspect of our faith mm. in relation with salvation. Still trying to lay the yeah. basics yeah. for our yeah. topic of yeah. discussion for today. We talked about restitution, evidence of salvation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. Um, our faith, actually to be saved, you only need one thing, mm. belief. 
believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that he came to die for you. Believe that God sent him to the world for your sake to deliver you because we couldn't deliver ourselves from sin. According to the book of Romans, that the whole world was subject, the whole creature was subject to corruption. So we couldn't deliver ourselves. Jesus Christ came to die for us, buy us back to God with his precious blood. So believing in that and confessing it with your mouth, that's what gets you saved. So salvation actually is premised on our faith in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, that's so powerful and so profound Amen. and so of yours out there. Let's go on to our first music video. We'll be right back with more for you. On our topic today, restitution, evidence of salvation. And we'll be doing the second part today. Please stay with us, we'll be right back. In your presence That's where I belong In your Restitution literally means compensating for a wrong or injury meted on another. Welcome back from the first music video. And if you just join in, also tune into this presence on our topic today: restitution, evidence of salvation. Mm -hmm. So, before we went on the previous break, you actually laid a foundation as to what salvation is. Salvation, just to put in a word, is a supernatural experience with the Holy Spirit, which now translates us from that old Adamic nature into a new man. That is the person after Christ. Now, let's now look at the emphasis of what we've been discussing today and where we'll buttress everything to the asset of restitution. To start with, what is restitution? Yeah, restitution literally means compensating for a wrong or injury meted on another. If you stole from somebody and now you realize what you did was wrong, you try to compensate that person either by giving him back what you stole or giving him something commensurate at least to pacify it also means to to after to go back to whoever you have offended and ask that person that look i have done this and this and this i need your forgiveness i also need you to have a clear mind towards me so rest, restitution is a whole lot of things but the underlining factor behind on, on behind restitution is trying to compensate you know, for an injury meted on somebody. And it is a moral thing. It, it's a moral thing. Actually, <clears throat> the subject of restitution in Christendom is somehow controversial. Some people don't believe in restitution. In fact, even some pastors, they believe once you ask God for forgiveness and God has forgiven you, it's okay. Um, but uh, uh, they, 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 they may be right in their own concept, but they are not completely right. Of course, you need God to forgive you. But you see, while you were living in sin, you also offended people. You meted injuries on people. You, you, for instance, when you were in the world, when you embezzled money, for instance, or you stole from a community, some people have died as a result. Because money meant for their health, you embezzled it. Some people have been frustrated. Time has been taken away from them. Now that you are saved, you can't continue to enjoy the loot now that you are saved. The people you looted, the money you amassed, the wealth you amassed, the cars you bought, the houses you bought as a result of those misdoings in the days of ignorance. Now that you are saved, if you are genuinely saved, you can't continue to enjoy those things. You have to give them back to the people that you, know, you stole from. For instance, if you forge a certificate, you wrote, I mean, somebody wrote an exam, you used the certificate to get a job, and now you are saved. You can't continue to use that certificate because that is, if, I say, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? So you are living your life on a faulty foundation, and that's what salvation came to correct. Now that you are saved, if you are genuinely saved, you will return the certificate to the owner. You will quit the job. If you still want to come back and work, you will go and write your own exam, pass your own exam, and look for your own job. That is the moral standing, you know. Uh, though there are things, I, I, I must say this, there are restitutable things, 
you know, physically restitutable things. For instance, if I see I have some of your things in custody, uh, I, I need to take it back. Like the issue of certificate, I need to take it back. But there are unrestitutable things where confession is needed. For instance, when you bear a false witness against somebody and that person had to go to jail. And now that you are born again, yes, you can't give that person back the time he spent in jail, but you owe that person moral obligation to go and say, I lied against you, and please, I need your forgiveness. So that is the thing about restitution. And any man who is genuinely saved, like Paul the Apostle said in, that, in our memory verse, as we will come there later, he said, I, in, in, in that Acts chapter 23, he said, I stand in clear conscience before any man until this day. If you are saved, you must have good conscience, not only before God, but also before men. That's what restitution is about. So powerful and so profound. Thank you very much, for the introduction you actually gave to what restitution is. And in the course of our discussion today, we now see how we can carry out restitution. While we are waiting on that, let's go to our Bible reading for today, which is taken from Acts chapter 23, verse 1 to 5. Acts chapter 23, from verse 1 to 5. The Bible says, And Paul, earnestly beholding the counsel, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all the good conscience before God until this day. Yes, that is that's talking right. about that's his forgiveness right. before right. God. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. And the high priest Aeneas commanded mm. them mm. that stood by him mm. to smite him on his mouth. Mm. Then said Paul unto them, mm. God shall smite thee, thou whited wall, mm. for sittest thou to judge me after the law, mm. and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law. Mm. And they that stood by said, Revelest thou God's high priest? Mm. Then said Paul, mm. I wish not, brethren, mm. that he was the high priest, mm. for it is written, mm. Thou shalt not speak mm. evil of the ruler of thy people. Mm. Hmm. The Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. This is very instructive that this is coming from Paul. Paul, who was known to be the persecutor of the church. Mm. We knew what he did against Stephen. He was a threat to the people. He was a threat to the church. He was a threat to the apostles. But now that he is saved, and somebody was trying to, to, to judge me, actually commanded that he should be smitten because he was declaring his righteousness in Christ before men, that he was in good conscience before God until this day. And then he, maybe out of anger, he, he replied that man that you whited wall, how dare you? I, I think the old nature in him wanted to rise. Then he was quickly reminded that this person that you are talking to is a priest of God, at least according to the religious setting of that time. Quickly he retracted. Immediately. Immediately. <laughs> he said, I'm sorry, I didn't know he is a priest of God because it is written. You should not say such a thing against the ruler of the people. So, you, you see, that is salvation. Now, that coming from somebody like Paul the Apostle is very instructive what salvation can do. It very, this is a man that, in his old nature, I mean, you wouldn't dare say that to him. He would have ordered that he should be killed. But now, even when he, the, the flesh wanted to take hold, he wanted to react, like some of us react in anger when we are pressurized, but instantly, he said, he restituted instantly. He, before the man, it was like apologizing. That's a kind of restitution. I, I've said something wrong to you. I shouldn't have said it. I'm sorry. That's restitution. And that is what Paul demonstrated here from this scripture of us. It's a great lesson for hmm. all of us. Hallelujah. Amen. That is an evidence yeah. of his salvation. Yes, exactly. So to go into the open heavens written by our mm -hmm. father in the Lord, okay. Pastor E.A. Adeboe wrote, mm -hmm. a sign that confirms whether you whether or not you have experienced genuine salvation is your willingness to make restitution with your fellow men. Yeah. When you are genuinely saved, mm. the spirit of Jesus Christ in you mm. will motivate you yeah. to right your wrongs mm. and undo your evil deeds. Mm. And elderly judge once attended one of our meetings mm. at the Sheraton Hotels mm. in the Kedja, Lagos, mm. and he gave his life to Christ. Mm. On his way home after the program, mm. he just could not contain himself. Mm. There was a person he quarreled with mm. several years before mm. And he had a burning heart mm. to resolve the dispute. Mm. So right from the venue of our program, mm. he went straight to the house of the person mm. in order to settle the matter. Mm. Did you say you are saved, mm. but you still hold grudges, mm. have bitterness, mm. and manifest an unforgiven spirit? Mm. Please examine yourself mm. to be sure you are truly in Christ. Exactly. 
Mm. Like we saw in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if anyone be in Christ, is a new creation. Old things, old nature must give way. The nature of malice, the nature of bitterness must give way. So the genuine proof that you are genuinely saved is your ability in Christ to forgive those who offended you and to seek forgiveness from those you have offended. You, you, you can't say you are saved and you know you have offended certain people and you begin to dodge them. No, salvation will, the Bible says the righteous as bold as a lion. It emboldens you to go meet them and say, I'm sorry. I, we can't continue to live this way. I'm now a born again Christian. I'm now in Christ. And you see, there's an aura about salvation. Even the people you have offended that you thought would kill you, the experience you have, we, 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 we encumbrance you so that when they see you, they see the glory of God. If God has forgiven you, no man can hold grudge against you. So if God could forgive you, if you do the right thing, you go meet them, the spirit of God will also touch them. They will also forgive you. And then you begin to live a life in Christ. Just like our father pointed it out in one of the programs in Ikeja, a man, after he got saved, he remembered that I have not been talking, I have not been in good terms with this person. He went straight and restituted. You know, so you can't say you are saved and you seek bitterness in your heart. In fact, it's so, it's so amazing that even in the church, you see people who don't talk to themselves. Uh, the question I ask, are we going to the same heaven? Well, I mean, if we, 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 are, we call ourselves brethren in the church, we are in the same choir, we are in the same prayer, but we are in the same church for God's sake. And we don't talk to ourselves. We are in the same choir, we sing together, and after service, this one go this way, the other one go this way. Nobody wants to talk to themselves. We are bearing grudges against us. We need to repent of that. It only shows that our experience is either our experience is not genuine or we have lost the experience. Mm. If you see, there is no way the Holy Spirit will live in you, genuinely saved, filled with the Holy Spirit as a child of God, and you can still be, be comfortable bearing grudges with your brethren in the church. There's no way. So it's either we are not genuinely saved, we're only pretending, or we have lost the experience. Either ways, we need to get back to God. Hmm, hmm. That's so powerful and so profound. Thank you very much. And so if you also that, let's continue on to our next book, which will be used for Bible reading in one year. We'll be right back with more for you. Still on our topic to the restitution, mm -hmm. evidence of salvation. Mm -hmm. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. In your presence, that's where I belong. In your Restitution is the evidence of salvation. Welcome back from the Bible reading. You want to know just join us with tuning into this presence on our topic today, restitution, evidence of salvation. Now with us on this is Apostle Praise Johnson. To continue in the hope and evidence written by our father in the Lord, Pastor mm. E.A. Adeboye, mm. he wrote, Similarly, mm. there was a particular king in Ogun State, Nigeria, for several months. Mm. I went to preach to him and he would tell me, mm. before your mother married your father, mm. I have been going to church. Mm. He would show me a Bible that Queen Victoria <laughs> gave to his grandfather. Repeatedly, I said to him, your royal highness, this is not what I'm talking about. I'm asking you to repent of your sins and surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Then one day, he yielded and gave his life to Jesus. By that time, he had not seen his wife for years. Due to the disagreement they had, within days of giving his life to Christ, he promptly contacted her and they resolved their differences. You cannot be genuinely saved and refuse to restitute. You, that is the word. You cannot be genuinely saved and refuse to restitute. Like our father in the law was talking about this king in Ogun State. Of course, he was religious. He goes to, in fact, he said, he claimed he had been going to church before, before Pastor Adeboye's parents met. So apparently must be an old, he must be older than Pastor Adeboye's <laughs> parents. So he was claimed that, look, when were you born? Before your father met your mother, I've been going to church. In fact, he showed him a Bible that Queen Victoria gave him. You see, all those things are not equal to salvation. You can be going to church and you are not saved. Hmm. You can be going to church. Religiosity is not the same as salvation. Hmm. 
morality is not the same as salvation. When you, ex and the man had, he was going to church, he had the Bible given to him by, by Queen Victoria. Probably he reads the Bible every day. But he was still at war with his wife for several years. They had a disagreement and wasn't talking to her. He didn't, but the day he had the experience, I was talking about supernatural experience. Mm. He was transformed from the old person to the new person, and then he realized what was wrong in his life. And then he moved within days to bring his wife back to him. That is evidence of salvation. Let me summarize by saying that restitution is the evidence of salvation. If you are saved, you will restitute. Salvation without restitution is fake. Salvation without restitution is not genuine. Salvation without restitution is not complete. You don't even need to be told. The Holy Spirit will tell you that you need to write so and so and so and so wrong. That's the proof that you are saved. Like the lesson from this king that Pastor Adeboe shared with us in this book, anyone that is genuinely saved, the first thing you look at, you have mended your ways with God, you must mend your ways with men. Otherwise, uh, you can't please God. Mm. Praise the Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. The Bible says, follow peace with all men all and men. holiness Holy without, without which you come mm. to God. Hallelujah. That's so powerful and so profound. Amen. So in the latter part of the Hope and Heavens, our mm. Father in the Lord, Pastor E. Adeboe wrote, in what areas would you need to make restitution today? Mm. If you stole anything from anybody, return mm. it or pay for its replacement right. if lost. Mm. If you bore false witness mm. against somebody, mm. go and uncover the truth. Mm. Have you fraudulently acquired your academic certificate? Mm. Go and restitute. Mm. If you have stolen another person's passport and impersonated the fellow, mm. using the passport to move around, go and restitute. Mm. Are you a second or third wife to a man? Mm. or? Have you, as a man, married two or more wives? Mm. You are living in adultery. Right. Make restitution. Mm. Have you received payment for a contract which you did not execute? Mm. Go and return the money. Right. Have you been falsifying records and stealing money through that? Go and restitute. Mm. If you have tough cases, seek counseling from a pastor in a true Bible-believing church. Mm. Also, ask God to help you. Mm. If you really want to obey God, mm -hmm. it will definitely make a way for you. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just how to restitute mm -hmm. the things that you must restitute, restitutable things. For instance, if, uh, Daddy made it very clear here. If you have stolen another person's passport and you're in passport, and unfortunately, a lot of Christians don't even know this is wrong. I, I know a lot of Christians in this country who are using another person's passport to get things done around. The fact that government has not discovered does not mean God has not discovered it. But God is giving you a chance. Maybe you are waiting for an experience like this today. Maybe you are waiting for this broadcast so you can know that you have not been living the right life. Right your wrong. If you have stolen from somebody, take it back to the person. If you have used it, give the person in commensurate finance, if you don't have the money, go and meet the person and ask the person for his forgiveness. Uh, but the more difficult ones <laughs> is when you have a two wives or you are the second or the third wife, how do you restitute that? A, a friend of mine once told me something some years ago. He, he, he didn't quite agree with the, the doctrine of restitution. He said, a woman got married to a man uh, during, uh, I mean, as a non-believer, and they divorced, she now went to marry another person, and this her husband has married another person, and the, the man she got, she went to marry, had married before, and they divorced, so he now married this one. So this man now uh, encountered Christ, mm -hmm. and now wanted to do restitution. So he now went back to bring his old wife, reconciled with her, and brought her back, and now asked this one to live, and this one already had three children for him. And so where does she go? Now, when he, he, he asked me that question, so how does restitution come in there? I said, in the first place, there was no marriage. And so uh, he said, but okay, where will she start from? I said, that is the price of either ignorance or disobedience. Both of them have a price. 
When the Bible says we should carry our cross and follow him, we don't really understand what the cross, we think is the persecution that we face in the faith. No. The consequences of our old life is part of the cross. The prices we pay for the wrongs we've done in time past and we have to live with by faith in the Son of God is part of the cross that we must carry. She has to bear that cross because she was never married in the first place. She was living in adultery according to the standard of the scripture. So what do you do? Because as a second wife, when you come into somebody's life, you deny somebody the privilege, the joy of uh, the husband of our youth. If a woman is married to a man and you came in, you have broken their privacy, you broke, you encourage the breaking of their vow, you deny them the joy of building a life together. So what do you do? How do you rescue that? You get out of that marriage and allow the real person to begin to mend her ways with her husband and enjoy marriage. Same with the man. If you are married to two, three wives, now that you are saved, the two other wives, apart from your first wife, were your concubines. They were never your wives. So let concubines find their ways. Stay back with your wife. Enjoy with the wife of your youth, not with the wives of your youth. God made only one wife for Adam. If God wanted us to be polygamous, he would have made two. After all, there were seven ribs on him. He would have made more. So if God said one, anything outside that is against the counsel of God. So when you get born again, let everyone face their life. The first that you got married with is your real wife according to Christ, according to the scriptures. Every other one is a concubine. So if you are saved, you can't go on. I don't care if the concubine have given you ten children. A concubine is still a concubine. And so let the concubine go. The children are yours. It's part of the consequences of your misdeed in the days of ignorance. You see, the, the days of ignorance God has overlooked, but he has not overlooked the product of the ignorance. And so it did become your responsibility. And that's what restitution is about. But as a man, maybe you brought in a woman in the days of ignorance, she's your wife. When you are restituting, you won't just send her into the cold. You must also compensate her because you wasted her time. So restitution is both ways. You must sort her out. You must establish her. Of course, what you compensate her with will not be enough for the time that has been wasted. But it's a palliative. It's something to show your remorseness. It's something to show, well, I'm sorry I have wasted your time. I didn't know. But this is what I am doing, at least to alleviate the effect of the present reality. Sir, what about in cases whereby we have the man actually married the woman based on false foundations, exactly. in that the man was actually married before yeah. in a particular place yeah. and came to another yeah, young promising lady yeah. and deceived exactly. her. I was never married before. Exactly. And years after, the woman exactly. now got to understand yeah. that, okay, that man had been married That's with right. kids before. Right. How do we carry a restitution in that place? In, in, in other ways, there was no marriage because it was based on falsehood. Bible is clear. If the foundation be destroyed, what, they can do, what can the righteous do? There was no foundation in the first place. So it was only waiting for time. So whoever gets saved among them will realize that we were never married. They were never married before. So the, and the lady that was also deceived, uh, yes, we call it deceived. We only look at the side of the man, but it was also a responsibility to find out about the man that she was going to marry. How can you marry without making findings? The man didn't jump from the tree. He didn't join from the sky. He has friends. He has relatives. You should do your homework. And uh, young ladies that are listening to me right now, that are listening to this broadcast right now, take note of this. That you met in the church is not enough. Anybody can meet in the church. Don't marry a man because you met him in the church. You must know where he's coming from. You must know his past. You must make sure the marriage is founded on truth, on righteousness, on, on, on equity. You must make sure you, you satisfy your conscience by doing due diligence so that you will not blame yourself at last. Mm -hmm. This woman should have done due diligence. Just taking a little research about the man you want to set away, you will find out some things about him. Mm -hmm. And that is why it's important to also come for counsel. A lot of people don't go for counseling. He'll say, I met a man. Even when the pastor or the spiritual leader is trying to pick some things, they, they're like, no. They say love is blind. And I always said, any love that is blind always comes with a repercussion. Mm -hmm. uh, in these days, love must open its eyes well and see where it is going to fall into. Mm -hmm. 
praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you very much, sir, for the life applications you actually gave to our topic today. We celebrate God in your life Amen. and to our viewers. So let's continue on to our next week, which will be used for our hymn. We'll be singing in 40, which is Take My Life. As soon as we come back, we'll come back with the memory verse for you. Still on our topic today, restitution, evidence of salvation. In your presence, that's where I belong. In your prayer. You need to apologize, even for the offenses you committed in ignorance. Welcome back from that human. If you just join in us, you're tuning into this presence on our topic today, restitution, mm -hmm. evidence of salvation, and this is the time of the program where we discuss our memory verse with Apostle Praise Johnson. Mm -hmm. Our memory verse is taken from Acts chapter 23, verse 5. Acts chapter 23, verse 5. The Bible says, Then said Paul, I wish not, brethren, that he was the high priest, for it is written, Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. Just like we said the other time about Paul the Apostle, he had spoken against the man. When he realized it, he said, I didn't know. But that you didn't know doesn't mean it's not an offense. And so you need to apologize, even for the offenses you committed in ignorance. That's what the memo was mm. is about. Thank you very much. That's so powerful and so profound. And so of yours are there. The key point for today says salvation straightens your crooked path with God, while restitution straightens your crooked path with men. Amen. Let's continue on to our prophecy declaration with our Father in the Lord, Pastor E. E. Adeboye. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. The Lord will answer all your prayers. The grace never to offend God again, receive it now in Jesus. The Almighty God will arise for you. He will arise for your families. He will arrive for his church. He will arise for your nation. You will not die before your time. All your dreams of greatness shall be fulfilled. You will shine at home. You will shine abroad. You will shine everywhere. Whatever you touch will begin to prosper. God will accelerate your promotion. He will take you to the top. For the rest of your life, you will operate under divine favor. It shall be well with you. God will fulfill all your dreams. He will grant all your requests. And your joy shall overflow. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Bless our one shout on it. Welcome back from that prophecy declaration. I believe you flamed every prophecy that has gone forth on you. So before we let you go finally in this episode, what will be your final thoughts to our viewers on this topic of restitution, evidence of salvation? If you are genuinely saved, go and right your wrong. Like we saw in the key points, salvation straightens your crooked path with God, while restitution straightens your crooked path with man. You are dealing both with God and with man. So when you straighten with God, straighten with man, that you have also offended. That's restitution. Hmm. Hallelujah. That's so powerful and so profound. Thank you very much for making time to be with us and our prayers that God will continue to increase on all sides. Mm -hmm. And above all, 
thank you for making time to be thank with us thank you very much for always having me Amen. Amen. And so, of you all, Saudi, I believe you've learned so many things on our topic today. Restitution, evidence of salvation. We need to actually watch our relationship vertically and horizontally. Based on what our Father in the Lord said, it says salvation straightens your crooked path with God, while restitution straightens your crooked path with men. We really want to appreciate you for the time you spent to watch this program. I believe you'll be blessed in the mighty. Perhaps you have any comments you want to leave with us. You can do that on our Facebook page. That's in this presence bracket, our time bracket. You have the mail you want to leave with us. You can do that on. In his presence at Redemption TM, the TV. I use this time out to say very big thank you to our sponsors out there. That's my G Farms, 1 John 5, 4. House on the Rock in Johannesburg, South Africa, and of course, the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the Master's Place. I leave you with our last music video. As always, stay tuned in God's presence. God bless you.